In this video, we are going to talk about how to record the data from our titration experiments, how do we process the data so that we can calculate the concentration of our unknown sample. So let's get started. Now this is a raw data table. As you can see, there is an initial BRAP reading and a final BRAP reading. Obviously, initial BRAP reading will be the volume of the titrants before your titration, and the final BRAP reading will be the volume of titrants after you reach the end point. So we record this for all four trials, and all we have to do is to do a subtraction, and we can find out the volume of HCl used in every single time. So for example, in this case, we have used 20.40, and for different trials here, we just simply follow these steps, and for this one, we get um, 19.40, one, and this one we get 19.1 as well, and this one we got 19. Alright, so we have finished the raw data table, we have finished off finding out the volume of HCL used in every single trials. So let's move on to the next part where we process the data from here. Now, for processing the data, first of all, let me remind you about the reaction. The reaction is between the hydrochloric acid and the sodium hydroxide. Now, this is a very simple setup showing that the HCl is a titrant contained inside the burette, while our unknown sodium hydroxide is our analyte, which is down there in the conical flask. So now we should start by calculating the average volume of HCl used, or the average titer. So titer means the volume of titrants that we use. Now the average titer, we are going to take the average of the volume of HCl used in all the trials. But then pay attention. If we have come across some extreme data, if you look back to the previous uh, raw data table, you notice that the volume of HCl used for the first trial is very different from the, the remaining data. Now, if, if such situation happens, we will consider not to involve this one in our average volume. This one is regarded as extremities or extreme data which will be neglected or discarded in our calculations. So when we calculate the average titer, we only have to concern this one, this one, and this one. All right? So for the average titer, it's going to be 19.1 plus 19.1 plus 20, uh, sorry, 19 divided by 3, and we tap our calculator, we have 19.07 cm cube, okay? Which, we take a three significant figures, then it is also 19.1 cm cube. So this is our average titer. Now, after we get the average titer, which is essentially the average volume of HCl we use, then we have to look at the equation. Now you notice that the mole ratio, if I put it down here, the mole ratio of HCl to NaOH is actually 1 to 1, right? So that means at the end point where the indicator changes its color, we will say that the number of mole of HCl equals to the number of mole of NaOH. And if you remember that, concentration is equals to number of mole divided by volume, right? So if I rearrange the terms, then you notice that number of mole equals to concentration times volume, right? So using this relationship, I'm trying to modify this equation so that it becomes the concentration of HCl times the volume of HCl 
equals to the concentration of MnaOH times the volume of NaOH. Now let's see what do we have in this equation. Now the concentration of HCl, yes, we actually have it, right? It is our standard solution. So this one is 0 0.1 mole per dm cube. The volume of HCl, which is the one that I have calculated above, 19.1 cm cube. All right? And of course, if you want to change it in the dm cube, you can divide it by 1,000. But it doesn't matter in this case because we have um, volume on both sides. Now, for concentration of sodium hydroxide, of course, we don't have it. This is our objective in our experiment. We are trying to find out this one. So this one, I don't know. But what about the volume of NaOH? It is actually already known because it is 25 cm cube as measured by the pipette. So you can see all we have to do is to divide both sides by 25 cm cube and then we can easily get the concentration of sodium hydroxide which is 0 0.0764 mole per dm cube. So this is how you calculate the concentration of our, the unknown sodium hydroxide solution, our analyte. So this is how we process the data and calculate the concentration of our analyte. So this is the end of the video. Thank you.